Hey look, not even a scratch on the surface. Hey, welcome to my tech farm. Very unique filament I have for this video. This is 3D X Tech Floor X PVDF. First time I tested this type on the channel. The price is quite high, $188 for the spool, and I got this box for free, but there is no additional payment. However, this video and the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker. Few specifications from the website. High temperature resistance, up to 130 degrees Celsius. Resistant to many chemicals, and this is something I'm not testing, so don't be confused. I'm not sure what will be the mechanical properties of this filament, but uh, this is a very big advantage of this material. It is resistant to oil lubricants, acid bases, and many other solvents. Non-hygroscopic, this means no drying is needed. And I saw that somebody claims that he even tried to store it in the water, and it still prints good. UV resistant, resistant to nuclear radiation. I hope I will not need this property. Uh, abrasion resistance similar to nylons, and this I can test too. And I already mentioned, made in the USA, which is now a big advantage thanks to this tariff of ours. Print settings, nozzle between 245 and 265 degrees Celsius, a bed between 90 and 110 degrees Celsius, and no need for special nozzle, no need for heater chamber, no need for drying, so it should be easy for printing if I solve that uh, bed adhesion, but we will see this during the printing. Vacuum packaging, but this is absolutely not sensitive to moisture. Oh, a very interesting smell. I'm not sure what kind of chemical is this. 750 grams on the spool, color is natural, and same print information as already mentioned. The filament is absolutely not brittle. And already mentioned, made in the USA. The filament is inserted and I can see it is extruded on the other side. Engineering plate, I wash it and it will get a new fresh layer of the glue. So official the maximum recommended print temperature is 265 degrees Celsius. In the meantime I got a profile from them, they mentioned print slow, the bed temperature 110 degrees Celsius, engineering plate with some glue on it, but the print temperature 290 degrees Celsius. And I asked for the confirmation and they mentioned for this high speed printing they recommend much higher temperatures. Uh, I don't like to go much higher than recommended max temperature, so I will print some layer adhesion tests, but properly in my test objects I print maximum 270 degrees Celsius. Layer adhesion tests on 265, 75 and 85 printed by object. Print by objects, but I had to modify the G-code manually, so I'm printing from the SD card. I'm very curious about the bed adhesion. The calibration lines are down perfectly. And as a start on 265 degrees Celsius. No, I will stop the printing. This part cooling is not enough. It's not solidifying. Even the purge line sticks good, but I don't have the glue. And thanks to the glue it is removable, even now. So the start of the printing is good, the bed adhesion is good too. I have to figure out uh, what is the amount of the part cooling it needs, and don't forget this is printed on 265 degrees Celsius. Imagine this on 290. I'm thinking if I print all test objects at once then it has more time to cool down, but at the end again I will have only one test object, which will be over melted. Maybe I can add some bigger object next to it. This is the profile I got from them, 270 degrees Celsius on the nozzle, this is one of the changes I'm doing here, and the maximal fan speed I increased to 25, and only 4 is the maximal flow. And here you can see that additional box test object to have more cooling time for that uh, vertical test object. First layer is just finished and everything is okay so far, and I cannot really recognize the smell of this chemical like in some painting or something like that, I'm not really sure, but it is not too pleasant. But at least my X1 carbon is connected to that ventilation hole. The progress is promising, it's at 36%, but this is very slow printing. Objects are straight, so only problems I am expecting later with the vertical test objects if the part cooling will not be enough. 
Printing is at 71% and only on this one test object I noticed some warping. This one is for the impact test, but I think this is still measurable. Everything else looks okay so far. Mm, I will analyze them later. I'm not at this moment sure if this particle is enough. At least I hope they will be finished. And this was the last covering layer on the test object. Printing is finished, but before I open the door I want to enable the chamber fan a little bit. I don't like the smell. The bed cooled down. Let's analyze them. Okay, they're removable thanks to the glue. First let's check the warping, and in worst condition is this one for the impact test. It is measurable because in the middle it has that cross section, but I try to reprint this on KD Plus 4 with actively heated chamber. Now let's take a closer look of these. Actually they're not so bad, this is my reference for the printability of the filament. It's printed, not the nicest overhangs, but uh, it is measurable. Before I move to the KD Plus 4, one more attempt on X1 Carbon. I like challenges. So I will repeat the printing with just few test objects, but I will use Bream. I will go back to 110 degrees Celsius, but not because of better bed adhesion, but because of more heat. And I will preheat the bed and I will wait maybe 10 or 15 minutes, so I will have bigger temperature inside the chamber. Even now, at the moment of the start, the temperature inside is 48 degrees Celsius. It just started with the first layer. The start is absolutely perfect. The temperature inside is stable 50 degrees Celsius and I think it will not even go higher. Looks like the method works. Seven more layers and it will be finished and it looks okay. By the way, the temperature inside went up to 54 degrees Celsius. Printing is finished a few seconds ago. 54 was the max temperature. Exhaust fan. But first I also want to check the bed adhesion until it's hot. Okay, it's, it's really great. Only now I notice that still there is some micro warping on this test object, but not even close like with the previous printing. Cleaning of the brim is easy, except if that brim is on the gear. <laughs> really nightmare. All right, it's coming down, okay. I washed the engineering plate from the glue and the first time I noticed this kind of errors on my X1 carbon, it looks like the nozzle was too low and it damaged the surface. And this is also the first time I'm preheating the bed to 110 degrees Celsius and I was waiting 20 minutes before the printing. Hmm. I decided to give it a try on the KD Plus 4. I tried to use the same settings here, only the temperature inside is 65 degrees Celsius. And I'm using the brim only on the ISO test object. Gear will be printed without brim. It's almost finished, but looks like I have similar warping like with the X1 carbon when I use the brim. But the reason for this is weaker bed adhesion with the texture PI sheet compared to the engineering plate. It's finished few seconds ago and I want to show you, I wouldn't be able to remove it immediately on the X1 carbon, but here it's removable. Again I want to check my theory, this test object is for the wearing test and I'm using similar settings like with that critical printing on Exxon Carbon. Object is almost finished and no sign of the warping. But now let's check the bed. Oh, this is not good. I want to investigate this problem a little bit deeper, I'm printing a cylinder in this corner. No mark here, but now let's add some glue. Reprinting the same object, but this time with the glue. And the mark is there again. And one more time in this corner here, I can see I don't have the glue. Unfortunately, without glue it doesn't stick. But the point is, there is no mark on it. Now let's add some glue. <laughs> I'm ruining my engineering plate, which is discontinued. But I really want to investigate this. Not sure if you can see it, but it's there. But by time I noticed that it became smaller. 
for example here when I printed that gear. So let's try to use the glue but with polycarbonate which has the same print temperatures. Bambole polycarbonate. And I want to print another disc exactly here. I added fresh layer of the glue. It will finish in one minute and then I can analyze it. And it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a very stupid theory, but it looks like that somehow this uh, Bembolab glue reacts with this PVDF, which is not too good for this engineering plate and leave those marks. And I have no idea how to confirm or check this. And this is how it looks like now. This is a damage. This was the polycarbon and it's fine. And here was the gear, for example. So the situation is not that bad now, but it's time to move to mechanical testing. Tensile test with horizontal printed objects. In mechanical properties, I found a lot of similarities with the average non reinforced nylon. And in that summary table from a pattern supporters, I have seven pieces and I'll include the average values for this uh, nylon. And here we can see that uh, the PVDF is a little bit weaker compared to the average non reinforced uh, polyamide. Layer adhesion test with vertically printed object. And again in this test, the PVDF is weaker compared to the average non reinforced polyamide, but this is extremely good layer adhesion. This is my rating for this size of the test objects, and this is a fantastic category. Shear test side by side horizontal and vertically printed test objects. Now in the shear test I have only one printed in vertical position because I started doing this much later and it was quite strong. But uh, look at this similarity for the PVDF uh, horizontally or vertically printed, the load difference is very minimal. This means it has really great layer adhesion. Torsion test side by side horizontally and vertically printed parts. 1.1 1.6. This is very typical. The load is similar, but the brake type is different. This printed in vertical position breaks more suddenly. Torsion test, but again vertically printed test object. I have only one in that summary table because I started doing this much later. But let's check that PVDF. Look at this. Uh, horizontally vertically printed, they have the similar loads. Load at 90 degree rotation is more important for me with horizontally printed objects, but with vertical only brake load can be recorded. Impact test with a half kilogram hammer. Zero position. At the first look, not so tough like nylon, but let's analyze the footage. Edge positions of the hammer, and from this I can calculate the breaking energy. Maybe a compressor with a nylon was a bad idea, but I started the testing with the creeping, and there the initial deformation was very similar. PVDF is actually very brittle material. Three point bending test. Distance between supports is 50 mm and these loads will be placed one by one and I am measuring the deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. This is a deformation under 2.5 kg, under 5 kg and even here I can see the constant deformation during the time and this is 10 kg which definitely this material don't like. During the test it had huge deformation under the load but now 5 minutes later this is its permanent deformation. Wow, look at this graph. So PVDF, which sends better the bending until some point, in this case until 5 kg, but above of this, this is completely lost. But even this 5 kg is too much for this material, I can see a constant deformation during this one minute. Grip test the deformation on the constant load of 1.25 kg, and this material so far reminds me to nylon, which don't really like this type of the load. Twenty point ninety six, and this is day five. Again, time for the measuring, and it really don't like this scraping. Very similar to the nylon. Forty three point fifty seven. Quite big permanent deformation. On this graph you can see the distance between two reference surfaces and we can see that PVDF has smaller initial deformation compared to the nylon, but the creeping is the difference between two days and that's what we can see here. And uh, we can see yes, a smaller creeping compared to the nylon, but even on a day 5 it has almost I don't know, 1 millimeter of creeping.
temperature test in the oven and the last one on the right side is the filament from this video. Uh, three on the left are some PLA filaments which I will take out earlier. This is the beginning of the testing. PLA of course started to form quite early and I had to take them out. Let's jump in the time. I didn't like this angle so I rotate the camera just on time and on 165 I noticed the deformation. Don't forget my testing is different from the ISO standard, here I have lighter loads, but at least my testing is same like I did in earlier videos, so the results are comparable with each other. Varying test with this 3mm shaft and a 2.5kg load. There will be 200 repeats. Mm, not sure is it even measurable. For the touch almost nothing basically. I'm not sure how much you can see on the screen. Visually I can see some marks of the scratch but for the touch this is not measurable. Summary of all results one more time and this one line will be added to the summary table for my Patreon supporters. Layer attention test results. Shear test results. Bending deformation after 30 seconds. Bending, deformation after 1, 30 and 60 seconds. Torsion test. Impact test. And the temperature test. When I asked ChatGPT to give me some suggestions what to print or what to show as a practical applications, all suggestions were related to the chemical resistance. And only one was related to the wear resistance, which I actually tested. And yes, this is very wear resistant material, like TPU, more wear resistant compared to the nylon. Also on the other side, that this is very insensitive to moisture, unlike nylon. Yes, it is expensive. From mechanical properties, uh, well, uh, I'm not too impressed, except the layer adhesion. <laughs> Basically, it has similar strength printed in horizontal or vertical position. Now, it's not so easy for printing, it likes to warp. And so far, I couldn't solve that mystery with the engineering plate. On Kitty Plus 4 texture PI sheet, and yes, different glue, I had zero issues. Solely on engineering plate, bamboo glue, 110 degrees Celsius, I had that deformation of the surface. I couldn't get the answer from the 3DX tech, maybe summertime holidays. So if somebody has uh, this filament and engineering plate and don't mind to destroy it, please do some testing for me. Leave me some comments down in the comment section. Well, this was my experience with the PVDF filament. If you have some other, then write me down in the comment section a few lines. To my Patreon supporters, thank you all for your support. To all your others, thank you for watching this video until the end and happy printing!